Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and as you can see there are two GTX 970s, the Asus Strix uh, CU2 OC editions sitting here and if you watch my vlogs then you would know I've actually had these for a while and uh, I got them because I wanted to compare putting these in SLI versus just one 970 which I'd already reviewed pitting it up against a 780 Ti. So I've now benchmarked the 780Ti and a 970 on my 4790K, so it's time to take a look at how two of these bad boys uh, fits into the mix with uh, the various benchmarks that I run. You may also notice that I did not run an intro. I'm actually gonna stop doing that because they annoy me in videos that I watch, so I've decided to take it out of mine as well and save some time. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna take a look at the actual 970 uh, Strix Edition OC whatever. Uh, itself, unbox it, take a quick look at it, and kind of run over the features on the box real quick. A lot of buzzwords on here, uh, as usual. And then uh, we're gonna actually uh, take a little bit of an up-close look at the card real quick, and then I'm going to install them, show you how they look installed, kind of give you a quick run-through of how I did the installation. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. And then we'll take a look at the benchmarks, because that's what everybody's waiting for. So, without further ado, let's get into the packaging. So first things first, taking a look at the front of the box, you've got the, uh, the crazy Strix, is this an owl? I, I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be, but it's a mean looking bird of prey of some kind. Uh, and then the direct CU2, 30% cooler, silent gaming. This card does uh, keep the fans off at idle, which is one of the, the nice things about the 900 series. Uh, it does have four gigabytes of GDDR5. Uh, again, that's zero decibel. Uh, this is something that ASUS loves to plug on pretty much every single thing they sell, Digi Plus. And then this is the OC edition, so it's overclocked out of the box. Taking a look at the back, uh, they give you a quick rundown of that actual direct CU2 cooler. And they kind of show you, you know, a breakdown of the uh, heat pipes and all that. And then it tries to explain the Digi Plus VRM Plus super alloy power, 30% less power noise and 2.5 times longer durability. So apparently this card lasts forever because I've never actually had a, a graphics card go out on me before. And then it has their own version of the overclocking software that's really popular from EVGA, the Precision X. They're calling it GPU Tweak. So GPU Tweak with online streaming, whatever the heck that means. And then in very small font at the bottom, it runs through the actual detailed specs. And then uh, the sides really don't have anything on them except for the you know, GTX 970 logo. So. Let's, uh, let's tear into this thing and see what you get. All right, so I'm not gonna come in up close on this. There's no real reason to uh, just kind of run through what you get in here, but it's pretty much to be expected if you've ever unboxed a graphics card before. So open the flap, slide out the secondary box on the inside. It is pretty classy, actually. Asus uh, did a nice touch on this. I feel like I'm opening a, a nice watch or a nice uh, fountain pen of some kind. You get, uh, you get that. So it's got the ASUS logo, and then it says in search of incredible. I wonder, I was gonna say excellence. Was that their, their logo at one time? That, or that might be somebody else's slogan, I don't know. So anyway, flipping open this classy box. Uh, you, know, you know, this packaging is really nice. Maybe I should have come up close with this, but you get presented with this. So you have a, another box within a box, which is uh, just as classy as the outside box. So again, that gold ASUS logo, and I'm gonna guess inside of here is, uh, wow, that's wasted space if I've ever seen it. You get this whole box, and on the inside is this. <laughs> I really could have just done without this box, but uh, all right. So uh, you get your setup guide, you get your software and your drivers. Nobody uses that. Download your drivers fresh. And then finally on the inside of the box, the very bottom, is the big old Strix. Wow, this thing is hefty. Hefty, hefty. Whatever happened to those commercials? Those were funny. All right, so here's the card in the actual packaging. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out of this and then cut back because this part's always super loud and annoying. All right, so then here is the actual Strix Direct CU2 card itself from ASUS. It's got a very nice design to it. Like I said, it's very, very heavy. So it has a good feel to it. Uh, the fans look solid. You've got plenty of blades on the fans. You can clearly see the heat sink underneath as well as the big beefy heat pipes on here. Um, on, you got two on the bottom and then you got the one on the top connecting the two. Uh, the nice thing about this card and uh, the reason why I'm actually deciding to SLI 970s instead of doing uh, my 780 classifieds 
is because you only have to use one 8-pin power connector on this card instead of having to use the 6-pin and the 8-pin like you had to on the 980 because these are so much more power efficient. Thank you, 970. On the top, you have your uh, connections for the SLI, which is obviously very important. And then the, uh, the actual connection for the uh, PCI Express has a nice shield on it. And then the thing that I really love about it is when you turn it around to the back, you do have a nice back plate on this card and it has been designed so when the card is inserted in your system, the ASUS logo and DirectCU2 is facing the correct direction. I've seen back plates before where they face the uh, text the other way. So when you put it in your system, it's facing the wrong direction or it's, it's wonky. So they actually thought that one through. It's a nice solid back plate, covers the entire card. Uh, so it's gonna actually you know, give you some additional cooling. I'm trying to squint and look in there, see if it's sitting on anything. It looks like it is on maybe some memory, maybe? I don't know, I'm making stuff up at this point. I guess I could look at the graphic a little bit better. But anyway, the back plate's part of the reason this card has so much extra weight to it compared to the EVGA card that I looked at before. And uh, you know, that uh, that's, can be a good and a bad thing, depending on you know, your, your computer setup. I've had some cards before, I believe it was the 280X that I put in the uh, Razer build that were really, really long and heavy. And you'll notice in that build, the card's kind of drooping a little bit. It needed some support on the back to kind of hold it up. Uh, hopefully this one's short enough where it doesn't do that, but we'll see when we get it installed. So that's the next step. Got to put this thing in the system so we can see two of these in all their glory. Oh yeah, and like I said, here's your I.O. as promised, DisplayPort, HDMI, and then your two DVI ports. Well, all right, so the upgrade is finally complete. And as you can see, more than just adding the two cards has changed in the system. Uh, one of the things about the ASUS WS board is where most boards have a PCIe 1X slot, the little short one, as the very first one in the chain going down. Not the case with the workstation board. It actually puts the, uh, the X16 uh, right at the top. So as you can see, looking at the system, the card comes extremely close to the motherboard heat sinks and uh, is really close to the socket. So that meant when I had the uh, NHU14S installed in here, it was not going to fit at all. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't any possibility. It was that, that cooler was going well down into the area for that uh, PCIe lane that I needed. So the other option I had having four uh, X16s on here was to do the second one down, which is where I originally had the card, and then the last one. But the problem with that is that left less than a half an inch between the fans on the GPU and the shroud for the power supply. So that was not enough room for airflow to be able to get through. So what I ended up doing was removing the uh, Noctua cooler and putting the X61 back in place since that one has a very low profile on the actual socket itself and now everything fits just fine, but uh, it was a lot more work than anticipated. Now the other thing I did was I switched out the uh, eight pin and six pin cable that I originally had in there for uh, two eight pin only. So that cleans things up a bit. I just have two cables running, which is nice and uh, no extra cable dangling down because this, you know, the, the Strix only needs an eight pin connection, which is really handy. And then of course I put the SLI bridge on there and uh, boom, you're done. That's, that's the installation. So if you had a motherboard that was uh, laid out normally, yeah, you probably wouldn't have had any kind of a clearance issue to deal with, but uh, in my case I did, but thankfully I did have that crack in X61 available to uh, solve that problem. So as you can see, uh, it looks really great. Uh, everything came out like I expected. The weight of the cards is a bit of a concern. You can see they are sagging a little bit, so I might look into modding some kind of a support beam in here for these cards uh, at some point to help hold them up a little bit because they uh, they are sagging a little bit because of all that extra weight, especially with that back plate, but not to a point where I'm overly concerned. So, all that said, now the next thing to do is run the benchmarks. So I'm actually going to do that uh, tomorrow because I want to use tonight to be able to uh, play around with this and do some actual gameplay to get an idea how that's going to go and then uh, run all the benchmarks again. So, time warp time. All right, well, as you can see behind me, everything is up and running and nothing exploded after turning on my first SLI build since the late 90s when I did one with a couple of 12 megabyte Voodoo 2 graphics cards. So that's always a good thing. 
And uh, I had a couple of days to play around with it now, and I have to say I am really impressed. Titles that take advantage of the SLI technology really take advantage of it, and it, it makes a huge difference. So without any further rambling, let's take a look at the benchmark results. All right, so as you can see from those results, like I said, the games that take advantage of the technology take advantage of it really, really well, especially Far Cry 4, which is great because that's the game I'm playing right now. I was blown away by the performance I got at 1440p. And there are titles uh, that we are hitting the bottleneck on. So one of them is uh, Assassin's Creed 4, even with V-Sync disabled, apparently has a 60 frame per second cap. It's obvious looking at the benchmark results. So that's more of a low-end system benchmark than anything else. If, if I'll probably just drop it all together. And then uh, Borderlands 2 and Watch Dogs. Those are two games that really aren't optimized for SLI all that well. Uh, they did see a little bit of a bump in performance, but you know, not great. Now I did notice just playing Borderlands 2 at uh, 1440p, there did seem to be a little, a little bit more of a bump by going with the SLI, but it still, it wasn't, it wasn't nearly the kind of performance difference you saw with like Battlefield 4 and, uh, and uh, Far Cry 4. So, you know, it's just, it's going to depend on your title, but I do have to say uh, some other observations. The system stayed very cool during the testing. As a matter of fact, it was kind of cold and I had my space heater turned on in the office while I was doing the benchmarks because it was getting a little bit chilly in here. So that says something. Additionally, a lot of people online have been complaining about coil wine. Hey, that rhymed. But they're not wrong. Both the EVGA and ASUS cards now that I've tested with the 970 chip uh, did exhibit coil wine. And both of these ASUS cards, uh, they, they, they do show it. However, they only have coil wine when you get above about 70 or 80 frames per second. And it gets worse the further up in frames per second that you go because the card is just, it's working so fast that uh, it's just, it's like, it's freaking out. But it's audible if you don't have any audio playing. And you, as you can see, my computer is very close to where I sit. So it, it's easy for me to hear anything going on in the computer at all whatsoever. So yes, I could hear it when I was running the benchmarks, especially, uh, you know, some of the synthetic benchmarks, 3D Mark really pulled it out. But when I was actually gaming and I had the speakers turned up, uh, in games when I had V-Sync disabled, I really couldn't hear it. I had, you know, I, I had things set to a level where I would have them set if I was playing it naturally and, and I couldn't hear it. And I did notice that if I enable V-Sync on my particular monitor, uh, that caps the frame rate at 60 frames per second. And when you're capping at 60 frames per second, you don't hear anything at all. As a matter of fact, the fans on these ASUS Strix cards are so silent, and they're actually completely silent when you're at idle, but they're even so silent during gaming that I could barely hear that the cards were, were kicking the fans on at all, which was really nice. So, 60 frames per second, super quiet. Higher than 60 frames per second, a little bit of coil whine, fans are a little bit louder. There's your trade-off. So then you may be asking, well, what if I have a 120 or 144 hertz screen? Well, like I said, you're probably gonna get the coil whine because your frame rate is gonna be higher. But if you use a headset or you have speakers, I've got my A5 Plus speakers with a subwoofer, uh, you're not going to hear it. But if that's the kind of thing that really gets under your skin and you're really OCD about any kind of odd noises coming out of your system, um, the three 970 cards I've tested so far have had it. Looking at the forms, people were saying they were RMAing their cards, they were getting them back, they were still having the coil line. So uh, with the 970s, that is something to consider. However, 
man, is the performance per dollar impressive, especially when you put these things in SLI. I was really impressed. Like I said, this is my first SLI setup since the late 90s, and uh, I was skeptical. I was very skeptical going into it, but wow. So there you have it, benchmark fun all over again. Now let's see if I can convince somebody to supply me with 2980 so we can really get crazy and have some fun with benchmarks. I'm getting pretty good at running through these benchmark runs, by the way, I have to say. I rhymed again. I do the same run over and over again every time, so I've actually got it down to a pretty good science, and I'm really good at the particular scenes in each game because I've played them so many times. But all that said, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And uh, go ahead and head down to the description for information on how to follow me on my other social media channels such as Twitter, Facebook, and well, I guess email is not really social media, but it is a way to get a hold of me. And you know what? I'm going to throw my Instagram in there as well because I've been Instagramming it up a little bit lately. So go ahead and check that out as well. And you know the drill. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.